Hey folks, Steve here, talking Warwick Thornton's sweet country. Um, what you can see here are the two posters from Australia and the UK respectively. Um, it's always interesting how a film is publicised for particular markets around the world. Um, so the Australian poster I think is a fairly accurate reflection on the film. Uh, you've got uh, really the star of the film, Hamilton Morris. He is front and centre with a chain around his neck. Um, and, of course, you've got the tagline, justice itself is put on trial. In the UK poster, however, it's a bit more complicated because I would suggest that the UK poster gives you the impression that... Mr. Cocktail himself, Brian Brown, and Sam Neill are the stars of the film. So this is some sort of white colonial masculine film about perhaps hunting down um, Hamilton Morris, which I wouldn't say it's not that film because there is a certain degree of that happening in the film. But the film is very much the story of Hamilton Morris, or his character at least. Um, Brian Brown and Sam Neill are more minor characters. And this is yet another problem of the way that Indigenous films are often sold uh, to international markets, where the Indigenous aspect of the story of the films is actually put into the background, or in the UK posters case, the foreground, but sort of shrunk into the foreground. Um, also something about this film is the way that it's sold through uh, reviews. And you can see, which has sort of been cropped out by the image that you can see, but you can see a number of reviews, both from Australia and from all over the place. And up the top is awards, which we'll talk about in one sec. Now, I, I do feel it will be remiss of me not to discuss the US poster. Can someone explain to me what is going on with this poster? So no stars listed, not even Mr. Cocktail himself, Brian Brown, or Mr. Jurassic Park, Sam Neill. Uh, as a footnote, I highly recommend Sam Neill's new memoir that he wrote. Very entertaining, very gossipy, full of gossip. So if you're interested in... um. Sam Neill's very, um, uh, very successful screen career, both in New Zealand, where he originated from, Australia, and also, of course, America. Did I mention he is Mr. Jurassic Park himself? Anyway, um, that's an aside. He's not on the poster. Brian Brown's not on the poster. Uh, no one's on the poster. Well, okay, so we can see, we can see the central character. So that is true, but. It doesn't tell us anything about the film, who directed it, what it is, where it's from. And I think this is the whole point of this poster, that it's a genre film. It is a Western of sorts, perhaps. Well, there's a bullet, bullet hole through the poster, so that might suggest that it's about bad men doing bad things. Um, and that's it. That's the poster. So interesting that they don't sell it as a character study. They don't sell it as a star vehicle for known American stars. Um, I'm not sure. Do, do Sam Neill and Brian Brown still have cultural currency, box office currency when it comes to selling a film? Maybe they don't. Maybe their time in the sun has definitely faded. Uh, any, anyway, this is Sweet Country. It is the actual poster for Sweet Country. I did have to check. Maybe there was another film called Sweet Country. But no, no, this is it. And um, this is the poster. So strip all Australianness away from the film and just sell it as a genre piece. I will get to the genre of it in a sec. Now, um, we're talking about prestige with a film like Sweet Country, because this film is very much based on Sweet Country. If you look at a film like Australia, Baz Luhrmann's um, film, I mean, that was very much a film sold on its box office because it was a hugely successful film. Sweet Country was never going to make that sort of box office Um so what they do is they sell their prestige through um, prestigious festivals 
that the film ha- is playing at, and also reviews. And I thought this was interesting, and I, I did want to just um, bring attention to it. This was a media release um, sent out by Screen Australia, um, where they talk about how la di da prestigious this film is. Um, and I quote, having been awarded for special jury prize at the Venice Film Festival in September and just one week later taking home the platform award at the Toronto International Film Festival, Warwick Thornton's Sweet Country, sorry, Warwick Thornton's Sweet Country Gold Rush continues with a further nine festival appearances ahead of its 25 January 2018 Australian cinema release. Warwick Thornton's Sweet Country Gold Rush do you like that pun there, folks? Uh, then you've got some quotes. You've got some other references to other films. And you've also got the um, Screen Australia CEO, Graham Mason, um, gushing over the film. He says it's one of the most exquisite films to come out of this country. There you go. So there you go. So that's that's one way of promoting your film. If it, you don't have the box office, you can use prestige through... Um, uh, notable festivals, notable um, reviews. And then it's got a list of the forthcoming festivals all from around the world at Tokyo, um, which would be an interesting response. I would like to know how the film did in Tokyo. And also London, it played in, a very prestigious uh, London Film Festival. And then you've got some reviews at the bottom. So I think it's interesting the way this film is sold. It's sold as an important film, it's a prestigious film, um, it's a serious film, and it, it doesn't play up the genre as opposed to the American um, poster. So I think that's um, worth a chat about. All right, now um, there has been initiative from Screen Australia to actually address um, the shocking kind of statistics of um, the dearth, shall I say, of Indigenous filmmakers working in our local industry. So on our left is a number of Indigenous filmmakers with credits as a director, writer, producer, or director of uh, photography by decade, 1970 to 2019. So Sweet Country does fall under this um, frame of time. So in the 1970s, any key credit from Indigenous filmmaker? Zero. 1980s. Uh, one, 1996, 2000s, so that's 2000 to 2010, eight, and then 2010 to 2019 is 19, all up. So it's still quite low. Uh, the graph is going at least in the right direction, um, but... It's, it's something that you know, really did, does need to be addressed and it's only going to be addressed if clear initiatives are put towards that. And on the right here is the number of titles with Indigenous filmmaker in key production roles. Producer, director, writer, director of photography, DOP, 1970 to 2019. And it's a similar uh, stat there, even though um, you've got more directors in that graph um, for 2010 to 2019. Um, But still, I mean, even if you look at the, um, which they don't, screens probably don't have the stats on this, but Indigenous directors who direct a feature film, it is actually really difficult for them to get their next film up. And I think that is a real problem also. Like it's, sure, it's important to get as many Indigenous directors directing feature films, but it's also important to be supporting um, directors because uh, in America, you can be a director and you can fail and you can keep working. But in Australia, it seems if you fail on one film, um, you're not working again. And even if you don't fail on one film, it seems really difficult to be getting that next film up. Um, so that's a, a broader conversation to actually have a look at the the. Um, filmography of some of our best Indigenous directors and why it seems so difficult to get a a series of films happening in quick succession. All right. Now, 
I want to talk um, a little bit just about the article for this week and also um, what Warwick Thornton was actually trying to do with history. So Warwick Thornton, of course, the director of Samson and Delilah, a very contemporary film was Samson and Delilah, and Sweet Country moves away from that to the history. And he said, I make films for Australia to tell Australia stories about who we are that are not in the curriculum, right? So he's, he's telling you the story you don't know within the story that you do know. Sweet Country may be a film constructed with the conventions of a Western, the guns, the horses, spirits, and vast frontier landscapes with law and justice as central themes, but it is also a film grounded in oral history and the written archive. And that's essential to understanding what Warwick Thornton is trying to do and understanding what is actually happening with these Indigenous films, right? Indigenous stories often survive in an oral form where they're, they're told, they're told around campfires, they're told in an oral way, and they're told through paintings and through stories, storytelling. And Warwick Thornton has actually done a documentary on this, um, which has a series of Indigenous uh, filmmakers and Indigenous people sitting around just talking about their stories. The thing about this is, with Sweet Country, a lot of it is based on fact, and a lot of it is based on... I don't really want to use the word myth because myth would suggest that it's not true, but a lot of this is from those oral stories, which aren't consultable facts. You can't go, say, to the state library and follow this up, right, in a way that you could, say, with other films that are all grounded in consultable records and facts and things like that. And I think that's important to know where the film is coming from, right? So it's coming from different sources, and that's where the history is founded and that's where the history is grounded. And that's that's what Warwick Thornton is essentially trying to do. He's trying to tap into that history that often isn't discussed or isn't um, put onto screen. Okay, now, the Western, this film is a Western of sorts. I mean, it's sold as a Western, um, which is interesting. So the Western, it makes sense that it's a Western. It's set kind of in the outback. You've got people with hats and guns and people being chased and outlaws and, you know, all of that a whole idea, you know, kangaroo court and you know, all of it. But it's the Western is a problematic genre, right? And we've got this thing called the Australian bush legend, right? Russell Ward wrote this book called Australian Legend. And it's very much on the white settler. The white settler basically putting their flag into particular space. It's about colonisation. It's about colonising particular spaces, which, you know, terra nullius, it's, it's all of those things, right? Um, and the whole idea, is the premise of this idea is that the frontier was a free space into which settlers had, by struggling with the land, become a new people. The settlers were taking over a new land. The settlers were these strong people. This was the whole idea, right? And the indigenous communities were in the decline. This is the whole idea of the bush legend is based on that thought or that myth. And that is very much a myth because it's not true, right? And that's how it's all founded. And if you look at other films in Australia, like The Proposition, which is a really interesting comparison to this. This is a far superior film, I've got to say. Far superior. Um, that, that's also about that, that the Indigenous communities are sort of on the decline, on the outskirts of town, right? And that you've got these, these white bush legends who are sort of taking over what's happening. And historian Henry, Henry, Henry Reynolds, uh, he's not a film historian, he's a historian historian, he's kind of pushed back about this whole idea of the, the bush legend and the white um, settler legend that's going on. And he said the other side of the noble frontiersman was his racism, violence, and misogyny. The other side of the legendary bush virtues was their foundation upon the oppression and exploitation of an invisible people, right? What this film is doing, what Sweet Country is doing, and why it is an important historical document and historical narrative is because Warwick Thornton is absolutely tapping into this whole idea. He is putting the perspective and the point of view with these Indigenous characters, right? And he is not looking at, 
Indigenous communities as a community that is on the decline at all, right? And I think that's a really interesting um, opposition that he's pushing up against a lot of these um, ideas around the bush legend um, being, you know, this white, strong, robust man when actually the Indigenous communities are just as strong and just as robust. And we don't often see that in a lot of... Um, a lot of these films and a lot of these narratives that are being told um, both in written form and also film form. So that's really important for Warwick Thornton to actually be giving you that perspective on screen. So um, Anne-Marie McLaren, who's reading for this week, she said some interesting things. So she's, um, she quoted actually Catherine, Catherine Simpson, um, who's talking about Baz's Australia, um, so she says Australia portrays a developing notion of country amongst its key white characters through an engagement with the land that was no longer an imperial gaze. In doing so, Australia does more than juxtapose imperial indigenous landscapes. It casts settler engagements with country rather than land as part of the reconciliatory story. Now she goes on, there are other moments in the film that strongly remind the viewer that Sweet Country is not just set in place. It is also about the acquisition of place and the dispossession and cultural disorder that lie at the heart of colonisation. So again, um, McLaren is talking about this whole idea that how Warwick Thornton is actually pushing up against this whole idea of the, the white coloniser and actually what's going on with that. Um, and McLaren also sort of makes the point that what's happening, what Warwick Thornton is doing is the way he shoots country, it's, it's quite beautiful. And often in these films, um, the proposition being a good example is how harsh the landscape is, is shot. And what McLaren is saying is that, you know, that's a very white perspective right and you actually in um russell ward's book uh the bush legend i mean he talks about this you know the, the you know the the englishman not being able to survive in the, the harsh you know landscape and, and things like that and he shoots it in this really beautiful way but it, he doesn't fetishize the land in the way that baz Luhrmann does in australia right he just shows the beauty of it and what mclaren um uses as evidence is when Sam Kelly and Lizzie, right, are away from the community and um, are on their country, right? They are smiling, they are joking, they are joyous. There's more dialogue between them. There's just more um, uh, that they are kind to people in, in many ways because they are on country and in a way where they can um, really engage with that sort of, that, that will, with, with the country, in a way um, that you don't see them so relaxed and so calm and so happy when they're actually um, in the community, um, which has been set up and controlled by the white coloniser. And I think that's that's an important point to be making. Um, and when you're having a look at the film, th really think about that and think through that and actually what's what's happening and the way that's shot. And Warwick Thornton, um, when he was casting this film, not just the central characters, but also the extras, he was using people from the region um, of where he was shooting because he really wanted people who were very comfortable with the land and the country and the landscape. They didn't, he didn't want it to feel to them like it was a foreign place or space for them. Uh, just a final thought. Um, how's the film resonate for you, with you, does it? Uh, is the film nostalgic? Now, nostalgia is an interesting term because we often use nostalgia when we're talking about history, but nostalgia is a very selective thing, okay? So we're, we're nostalgic over certain things of history but not other things of history. And um, I think it's fair to say there is a... If you look at, say, Baz Luhrmann's Australia, there is something of nostalgia very much at work in that film um, where, you know, even thinking of Hugh Jackman, Nicole Kidman, um, you know, being kind of in that landscape, um, in history, there is something kind of nostalgic and uh, well also romantic about that. Sweet Country, it's, 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 a, it's a beautiful film. It's a beautifully shot film and it's a beautiful looking film. And Warwick Thornton is a, um, you know, he's the director of photography. He's an amazing director of photography. He also shot The Sapphires. Um, he 
is um, he's shooting the film, but it's not in a nostalgic way. And like I said earlier, it's not fetishizing the landscape. It's actually doing something else with it. Who owns the point of view of this film, right? Whose perspective and gaze do we see the film from? And just think about the camera. Where is the camera placed? Who's given a point of view shot and things like that, I think is quite crucial in understanding what Thornton is trying to do and the um, perspective that he's trying to give you here. Who was the film made for? Was it made for... Uh, Australian audiences? Was it made for international audiences? Was it made for an Indigenous audience? And um, it, was it all of those things combined? Um, that could be one way of thinking about it as well. How is the country and land depicted is another important thing. And also the Australian accents or accents and voice across the film, not just necessarily Australian. How does the film sound? I, I guess is what I'm really getting at here. How does it sound? What? How does the landscape sound? How do people speak? How do people's, the volume of people's voices, right? How do people try and colonize space through their voice? How do you hear the Australian accent and, and how, what different variations of that accent do you hear? I mean, Brian Brown, of course, has the great Australian, um, I'm not going to say ochre. Brian Brown's not really an ochre. Well, maybe he is an ochre. I don't know. But anyway, he's got a great Australian voice, that really dinky die Australian voice. And that is used in a particular way um, to juxtapose other characters and other sounds that we're hearing in this film. Okay, so that is Warwick Thornton's Sweet Country. I hope that gives you some sort of context for the film. Um, it's a really remarkable film, beautifully shot, has to be seen on the big screen, I would say. Um, it's a real, I think, uh, is it a step up from Samson Delilah? I think Samson Delilah is a remarkable film as well, but I think this film really, um, it's, he's doing something else and he's really challenging himself as a director in this film, which I think is really successful. And it's a fascinating film to think about in regard to other more recent Australian films like Basil Luhrmann's Australia and also um, uh, The Proposition, which was a few years old, older now. All right, so that's it. Sweet Country, Warwick Thornton. I'll see you in the cinema. Bye for now.